Gonna build a mountain from a little hill. Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer. We are back with another speed build video of Inama Zoo. And in this episode, we're going to build the African wild dog habitat. And as you have seen, I first made some kind of hole, aka ravine. I'm not really sure if ravine is the right English word for it, but hopefully you guys know what I mean. So I created some kind of hole into the ground and I extended it actually because it was already there for the cheetah habitat to just make sure that the African wild dog is not able to, uh, to, to get out of their habitat and also to make sure that it feels more like a natural border. And obviously we also make sure that we hide away the Jeep Safari track ride. We really wanna give it the feeling that it is all natural, but you will still see like the drawing out of the track. I used the rock terrain tool for that to give it a little bit more of a darker feeling. And I used the, the rock tool for that because the soil tool is not really that dark in this biome. So that's why I'm using the rock tool, the smooth rock tool in this case. And I'm using that in like the whole zoo. You will sometimes see a little bit of the track, but, but mostly you will see just a little bit of a drawing out from some rock terrain painting where the track will go for the Jeep Safari. So I had to make sure that, of course, this was a separate area for the African wild dogs to stay in because this one is in between, let's see, in between the cheetah habitat and also for the giraffe habitat. Well, it's basically in between everything. <laughs> but we had to make sure that, especially with the mountain, because this is right before they go up on the mountain and we have like one part of that mountain for the okapi, which we did in the previous episode. But there now still is like this separate area in between the African wild dog and the okapi, which is meant to be for the aardvarks and the niyala. Those are the animals I am going to add in that specific area. But it was quite hard to create like this, um, to divide these two areas on the mountain because you really don't want the African wild dog to go up on the mountain to basically eat the niyala or the aardvark. So you really want to make sure that it is separate, but you still don't want to use too many doors. Like I really cringe of these huge big doors that divide these habitats, but I sometimes just am forced to use those. But before the mountain track, I really don't want to see any doors. So I really had to use like a lot of rocks and a lot of elephant grass to make sure that there is this, the, the, that this is divided into two different areas. But it's going to be a challenge again when we get maybe some puppies in. It's like all babies seem to be even more challenging to make sure that the traversable area is right and it works well and they're not able to escape a lot of time went into like making sure that the africa wild dog is not able to escape from this habitat and i did do that all off camera so yeah the video itself is is probably a lot shorter than i wanted it to be but i did do a lot off camera to make sure that the african wild dog is really only in this section of its habitat and not going to other animal habitats in this case so there is this really ugly connection of the staff door. What is, yeah, well, we, we, ha we need a staff door. We need keepers to be able to get into the habitat and to clean it because else we get like a poop overload if we keep it like one big habitat for all the animals. So yeah, I unfortunately had to add another gate in here, but I really make sure that you won't be seeing that guest or guest gate, no, the staff gate from the track ride itself so it's pretty much hidden away still but still reachable for the keepers to give the animals food and stuff so yeah uh there has to be one at least and you guys will probably only see that uh right now during the speed builds and when you will download the zoo later on but yeah it's quite unfortunate that you you yeah you have to add <laughs> these gates in your habitat to, to, in order to make sure that your keepers are able to uh, provide them with food and um, and clean the habitat but in this way to hide away it's the easiest way to fix that I guess 
So I started off with like drawing out the habitat with some.、Uh, I always ruin the name, but the umbrella thorn acacia tree. I did wrote it down now, but I probably still don't pronounce it right. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> But yeah, I tried to draw it out first to get like a good sight line of how I wanted it in the base to be. And later on, I added like a lot of shrubs and then a lot of more denser areas. Like this habitat is a lot smaller than the cheetah habitat. And if you have seen the cheetah habitat episode, you would know that that habitat is really. More focus on grassland and like really more open. There are barely any sections there with like more shrubs and stuff. I think only one or two sections. So and and I do really want to try to give every habitat still its own vibe and a little bit of a different different area and a different use of of trees and bushes or yeah I don't know but I really want to try to not make the exact same habitats for each and every animal but. Both the cheetah and the African wild dog are both grassland animals, so it was quite hard to achieve that. But in the end, the African wild dog has a little less grassland open area. It still has it, but there are also a lot of more tree clusters and bushes clusters on the edges of their habitat. So it is a little bit more green in the end, and a little bit of terrain forming. I didn't do too much, and of course, in comparison with the Cheetah, we did more of like a cave going underneath the track, right? For example, so that really created some kind of different elevation in the terrain itself. But yeah, this habitat in general is a little bit more rough、uh, in comparison to the cheetah habitat. So I really do like how this one has turned out. And obviously, I did hide away like a few、uh, feeders. Like we have the meat feeder play that I tried to hide away with like a little bit of rocks. And still, I want to add a little bit more enrichment items to make sure that the animals are still visible for the guests that are in the jeep safari. So yeah, we still want to try to attract those animals coming closer to the track ride, so we can at least see the animals from the track ride. I think that's still very important. And the water pipe for them to drink because we don't have a water section in this habitat either. Is hidden away at the entrance of the staff gate because I,、uh, yeah, well, you know my love-hate relationship with that one. Well, I don't really love it. I just hate it. <laughs> so what I actually wanted to do, I wanted to give the whole area a little bit more detailing, and I actually started to use the temple pieces. It's it's like a little. I don't know. You will see it later on in this people video, but it's it's like a little piece that just makes it a little bit like small little rocks. Just sink it into the terrain, and it will give a little bit more detailing, as if there are like a lot of small rocks. It's a really a pity that we can't recolor these little rocks because. They look really great. They actually look fantastic. But these are one of the pieces of the South America pack that we did not get as recolorable, and I still don't really get it why a lot of the temple pieces are also in a version to recolor. But these are the pieces that you can't really recolor. So that is quite a pity. But I really do still like the use of it, even though they are a little bit too light for my taste. But I think it definitely works to give a little bit more. Of a different environment in this biome, so I really do like it. In the end, that I use these for a little bit more details and a little bit more contrast. So you also see me、uh, adding some kind of、uh, sunken or, or fallen log. I, it's not really the best biome to use it for. I, I do realize that. I saw a lot of pictures in my Discord server of someone that lives. In South Africa, and the, he made a lot of pictures. I saw a lot of pictures with like fallen logs and stuff with like African wild dogs. So it really reminded me of that. But it's just really hard with the type of trees and fallen logs that we have in a game to really resemble that. But I just really wants to add something with a fallen log. So yeah, that is why I still added that one in. Like you, you just have to imagine that it's. There's like some kind of hole underneath it in real life, and they will just be chilling underneath there, getting a little bit of shade of the log. Those kind of so that was like a little bit of the feeling I was going for. But at the end of the day, it, it does not really match the environment, if I'm completely honest. But I just really wanted to add something like that. 
and also what I tried to do was using the cherry blossom trees for a little bit more contrast and a little bit more branches in the more denser areas I don't know I'm feeling that I'm sometimes missing out on seeing like those real logs and real branches in the more denser area so I think that kind of works out well with the cherry blossom trees just sink them down a little bit more in the ground and you still at least see a little bit more of the branches sticking out of all the bushes and stuff so I do really like that so overall, um, I'm pretty happy with this habitat. Like obviously, it's a grassland savanna habitat, so I can't really go too crazy again with the details, but I'm really looking forward to the mountain habitat where we're going to add the Niala and the Art Farks in. So that is going to be, again, a completely different area than we're building right now, and it will be fitting more in the biome of the okapi that we uh, recently built i'm still super happy with how, how that one has turned out and thank you guys so much for your incredible support on that you guys really really love the view as much as i did so thank you guys so much for your incredible support on that okapi video i really really am happy with how that one has turned out above of the mountain with like the waterfalls underneath it looks just really really stunning so thank you guys for that and i obviously Really look forward to hear what you guys think of this new, more grassland, more African savanna habitat for the African wild dog. So do let me know in the comment section down below, of course. And they got a question, uh, a few questions I'm trying to uh, hit before we hit the end of this video. <laughs> uh, Zach Waite says, here's an idea, maybe follow one of the jeeps as it drives through the exhibit so you can see things from the perspective of the guest. And uh, yes, I totally get that. But we're not going to do that because obviously I want to save the POV of the Jeep Safari track ride for the last video. So that's why I'm never following the track ride in uh, any of these episodes when we're still building. So you really have to be patient for the last episode to see the track ride itself with like the beautiful viewing from the guest point of view. So please be patient. But yes, we're definitely going to do that when everything is finished. And the same question, uh, same answer actually basically goes for Mr. Allen who asked, will you upload this to the Steam Workshop, please? Yes, I will upload this to the Steam Workshop, but I obviously want to make sure that everything is finished first before I upload it to the Workshop. And that is basically with each and every Zoo UZ except for the Franchise Mode series, of course, because we can't upload those to the Workshop. But yeah, definitely it will end up in the workshop later on, but it will take some time before this one is finished. So please be patient, but it will definitely come to the workshop for you guys to also just walk around yourself. So yeah, with the end of the video arriving, thank you guys so much for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Please do leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel a little extra, you may want to consider to become a FayFam member with the link down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye, guys!